G'day, welcome back to a new episode. So we're on to the internals today. I'm gonna to be a cabinet maker. Uh, I've been an electrician, a plumber, an engineer, a welder, now I'm a cabinet maker, and I'm not known for my finesse and uh, attention to detail, that's for sure. A few Renaults have proved that. A few dodgy gaps here and there, but hopefully with the CNC machine that you saw in the previous episode, all these panels are beautiful and square and true, and I just have to stand them up and put a bit of glue on and a couple of aluminium uh, profiles here and there, and she's done, but as I've proven over and over again in this project, uh, nothing ever works out to plan. So I'm sure there'll be lots of glue and gaps and uh, we'll, yeah, well, hopefully we'll get a decent result anyway. Uh, yeah, so I've ordered the external walls actually this week. So I've got about four weeks uh, wait on those. Uh, I'm working on this project at weekends and public holidays is all I get to do on it. So uh, I've got probably four weekends uh, ahead of me before the panels turn up. Uh, I've got a long weekend in there as well, which is good. So I'll probably be pushing up against those panels to get all of this work done internally. Uh, I've got to do the 12 volt wiring as much as I can in that time. It's not critical to get it all done before the walls go on the outside, but a bit of 12 volt wiring. There's, um, I've got a water heater and plumbing to connect up into the ensuite area. Also got to stand all the panels up, put all the aluminium profiles around, um, supports and everything else. Got to do all that. Um, this video, I'll probably do a bit of a walkthrough of the internal structure, like where the walls go and how and why and, and, and what the layout is. Um, yeah, there'll be a bit of plumbing, uh, hopefully get all of the walls stood up and glued together and finished. And yeah, by the end of it, hopefully it's all, the internals are pretty well done, uh, ready to a point where I can, um, start thinking about chucking the external walls on by the next episode. So yeah, we better jump in cause I'm burning daylight hours and, uh, God knows I need them to get them done before my deadlines. So let's go. Cheers. Just mocking up the rear cupboard space behind the uh, composting toilet in the ensuite. So these are all these have all got little doors on them on hinges that swing will swing open into the shower area. Um, these shelves at the back will will butt into the front wall of the caravan, so it'll create a cavity in that area there. And that area there and this cavity down here will be used to get a diesel heater exhaust and and uh, air intake and a few other things uh, there's a composting toilet fans got to have a discharge point so that will go in there uh, not really usable space for anything else so it's just a bit of a cavity unfortunately it worked out that way there might be an air con outlet as well so there'll be a myriad of hoses and wires and things going through there uh, at some point but yeah that's sort of roughly how it's going to be i'm just going to Glue it and screw it. Uh, I've got some of this PVC plastic uh, angle I'm going to use to help it a bit and support it until it's uh, butted up and glued against the front wall of the van as well. That's it, get into it. call that done but I wouldn't say done well <laughs> uh, tip for young players don't use black silicon black uh, sikaflex on a whiteboard oopsies like it's all hidden behind the uh, front facade no one will ever see it no one will ever know Uh, hopefully you saw me just set that up. So I bought some new clamps last night, some big long ones. They're 1270 long, so they fit across these 1220 panels, 1220 wide panels, which was the plan, um, which is going to be very useful throughout this whole build. So I just glued that on with a bit of PVC cement, that end panel there. So that's the front profile of the caravan, you can see. Uh, the front wall of the caravan will glue up against that edge and give it a bit more strength. But yeah, I used PVC cement. I did a bit of a test run the other day on a couple of bits of scrap. Um, where the I joined two edges of boards together and I left it queue overnight 
I think it would cure a lot quicker than that, but I left the cure overnight and the next day I couldn't get it apart. I like, literally could not pull it apart. So I think that'll give that a bit of good strength uh, more so than the sicker. Uh, I'll, it's got angle behind it inside a cupboard that'll put more strength on it as well. And I might even run a strip of aluminium in front here. I'll see how it looks when I'm finished. Uh, Just in case you're wondering uh, how to make a massive mess, the best way I've found is to not take the plastic off, the plastic covering, protective covering off the panels before you cover them in Sikaflex and then realise and then have to take that plastic off covered in Sikaflex and get it everywhere. Just a good tip there for, for the young players. Uh, if you want to make a mess, that's the best way to do it. I got it everywhere. Thankfully, nowhere that you're going to see it later on, but... Good uh, practice for the bits that are visible later. <laughs> Keep going. those guys on I have got magnets that need to go in behind them but I'm probably going to stand there to keep the doors closed that is I am going to um, stand it up and frame it all off and glue it all in to place and I'll just do those from behind once it's standing up so I can see what I'm doing yeah reasonably happy with that that gaps a bit big if I'm being critical I don't like it's three mil away around it's probably a little bit big but Nothing can do about it now, so we'll just live with it. Sunday, got another full day ahead of me. Uh, stood the panels up yesterday, most of them anyway. I've got a couple to put together. Um, all the glue hopefully is cured now so I can pull the clamps off and um, get into it. And I'll just do some final measures and everything, make sure I haven't screwed anything up. Uh, everything went pretty well yesterday. I was pretty happy with it, except the uh, shower door, which I completely butchered with the router. Uh, not familiar with this router, so I'm borrowing it because mine's getting repaired. Uh, the guide went a bit cockeyed and <laughs> we went off on a different direction to what was proposed so yeah binning that I'm going to get a custom shower door made up now I've already contacted someone who knows what to do uh, some perspex with an aluminium frame magnetic strip to close the door uh, channel for diverting water away much better product much much better looking but uh, a little bit more expensive so the budget's getting away from you a bit at the moment but <laughs> that's the a breaks we'll have to get on top of that I'll do an episode on budget later on I think uh, order of the priority for the day is to clean up the shed. I realised yesterday, trying to swing aluminium around and stuff, um, that uh, with a big carrier in the middle that's got height now, uh, it's nearly impossible. And I'm bashing into stuff and tripping over things and the, you know, all of my tools from the last probably few weeks have spread everywhere all over the shed. I just need to do a good hour in here, sweeping, putting everything away, rolling up cords, 
and all that sort of stuff because otherwise I'm going to end up breaking tools on myself or the van, which is going to make me upset. So, yeah, let's jump in and get it underway. Uh, we'll check in later in the day and hopefully we've done what we need. He said we'd do. Cheers. That's the final vertical panel in place. That went up pretty well. Uh, it's all neat and tight. Pretty happy with it. I've got to um, wait for that glue to dry though because it's um, only being held up by a corner piece there and the glue along the bottom. So I'm just going to leave it alone for the day and try and keep away from it. I thought I'd just do a quick run through of everything uh, now that I'm at this point. So I'll start here. This, this area here becomes storage. That's a divider panel from the storage area to the kitchen area underneath the bed platform so the bed platform sits on this lip up here queen size bed runs all the way along here to the rear wall of the caravan you can see the cutaway there so there's a little wall that steps up like that and then a vertical wall that meets the back of that panel there so i've got to build a steel frame out of this stuff uh, and do it as light as possible with as least metal as possible just to carry that bed frame that's the part of the bed frame there and I've got another bit over there that makes up a queen size bed area. Uh, yeah, so you access this area with a hatch and you can throw all storage in there. It's going to be a f uh, panel's going to go there uh, next to these drawers which has got all the Victron gear which I'll talk about in another episode that'll take a whole episode in itself. There's a fair bit in that. A bit of plumbing will go here. There's going to be a hot water unit going there and uh, there'll be a few penetrations on the outside wall here which will access fill points, breathers, uh, outdoor shower is going to go there as well. There'll be plumbing running around all along the floor, wiring all through here and up and around, which is probably going to make up the next few episodes as I tinker with all that sort of stuff. So this is the ensuite area. Got those doors in, they look all right. I was pretty happy with that. Big gappy, the three mil gap all around is probably a bit too much, but I'll live with it once that enclosure's filled behind it. Um, you won't better see daylight through there because it'll be dark inside, so that might help. Um, yeah, I've got to, I'll put the shower base in late, probably just before I put the outside walls on them, um, just to protect it, because I'll end up damaging it. Uh, so yeah, pretty good shower area. There's a composting toilet going there, as I've mentioned before. Uh, I'm gonna commission a new door, as I've mentioned earlier as well, because I screwed the other one up. That's just gonna be the back of the shelves. Uh, there'll be some pipes and stuff that go through here that are for the diesel heater and the, um, uh, composting toilet fan so there'll just be penetrations in the floor there to get it away from the van um, there'll be a fridge slide here and a fridge slot the fridge slide will form a bench seat inside so it'll come up like that you can sit on uh, butting up against that wall uh, I'll talk a bit about that when I get to it that's the only thing I haven't put in I guess the vertical only vertical panel that's not gone in door to the caravan through here step up into here this is sort of the living area which is a very small I know but it's the intention to live inside this van. Uh, drawers that slide out with all the, um, uh, all the clothes and whatever else, boots and things will go in there. That is the uh, airbag compressor control mount area, which I've talked about before as well. This is the kitchen area. So there'll be a big hatch here on the outside wall that folds up, creates a bit of shade up above um, and accesses this point here. Inver uh, induction cooker goes there. Uh, I haven't talked about that much yet, but I'll get to that when I start fitting the kitchen out. Induction cooker, sink, 
Um, and then there'll be another hatch here. It folds, actually folds down like that and forms a workbench out here in the kitchen area so you can work on it. And then the void in here will be all shelves filled with pantry type imp stuff, food and bits and pieces that go in there. I'm getting probably one of the next episodes I'll be, all the pumps will be mounted in here. That's the access to the tanks, those pipes. So I've got to mount the pumps in here and get all that plumbed in, plumb in all over the, beyond that wall that I mentioned earlier. Um, but yeah, it's coming along pretty good. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Get into it. So it's the weekend again. Uh, during the week, just in the evenings, I just cut a section of this channel, uh, glued one at a time and all the way around and finished that as well. So just, I didn't film any of it, but it's, um, that's on now. I can get the ensuite door ordered to the, to the internal frame size. Uh, it turned out okay. There's a few gaps that I'm not absolutely happy with. It's, it's made me realize that, uh, the flo the miter saw that I've got, it's like 20 years old. I think the old Ryobi is not great. And I'm going to need to do heaps of this work for the outside hatches on the, on the van. So, uh, 45 degree cuts are plenty are coming. So I'm wondering whether I need to invest in a new saw. I'll make that decision over the next couple of weeks. But yeah, a bit of silver, aluminium coloured silicon is going to be required to fill a few of these gaps. Uh, some of it's going to be hidden behind the door, which I can now order because I know the exact dimensions of the opening. So I've just uh, let's let my mate know that that's what I want. Um, yeah, so I've got that done, which is good. Another job off the list. Next order of events is to build this frame in here for the drawer system that goes out into the kitchen and out into the van in that direction. Uh, just scratching my head a bit on this. I'm trying to make it as light as I can by using these crates. Uh, they, they fold flat actually, but won't be doing that in this arrangement. Uh, I've got drawer fronts to go on the front of them so you won't see them except when you open the drawer and slide them out. So I'm just going to make shelf platforms out of a bit of the white stuff. Um, that's the plan anyway. I'll uh, we'll get into it and see how we go. That's it, mammoth effort. Took most of the day, actually. I did have a couple of breaks because I had to do some other things, but uh, it turned out all right. A couple of small changes in design when I was um, drawing this up and then when it went from the drawing to the CNC, a couple of things changed slightly and I ended up with this top shelf openings on both panels. This one's a bit lower than that one um, because I forgot that I tweaked it. So I ended up having to cut that panel and it steps, which means I had to rebate that vertical one there on the top so the two pieces could sit on it. So a bit of stuffing around, but we got there. Um, pretty happy with how that's turned out. The lithium battery will go in under there, 489 amp hour cable battery. Um, 
So that space fits it um, in terms of height and length. And then there's a bit of room behind it, which I think will be where I put the compressor. I'm not sure yet. There's also a space there that I can access when I pull the drawers out that a compressor will fit as well. So I might put it there, not sure yet. See what looks best in terms of getting to it with connections. I'll just show you the other side. Yeah, so that's how the front looks. Uh, it's fairly neat. I quite like the front of those uh, plastic crates. It makes it look a bit industrial and it's the same color as the anodized. I'm actually really, really warming to the idea of just leaving it like that. That's the kitchen one there. I have got face um, drawer fronts that will that are made out of this stuff, but I just reckon it's too soft and easy to damage. If I'm sliding them in and out and bashing them into the edges all the time, it's just going to end up looking rubbish anyway. So definitely won't be putting those in, but I could in the future just put a flat sheet of whatever I want, perspex, aluminium, a bit of ply, who knows, um, that's bigger than the opening, and then when I slide it in, it'll just butt up against that edge. A couple more panels to put in. I've got to put this one, in, one up here in. I need to get a bracket to prop it up whilst it's going in uh, but before the rear wall of the van gets put in because that's going to be where it should be glued up against. Yeah, so the plan, just uh, put a bracket up here like this. The rear wall of the van will come against here, obviously, so this will just be screwed and glued off there, but then I'll be able to have all that surface area at the back to also... Um, glue off later on. I'll just make it 18 mil below the top edge so I can put this panel which goes up there on top of it and then put it screwed along that edge and glued and this one as well and there'll be a bit of aluminium tr um, trim that goes out the top of that. I'll just have to put a piece in there to prop it while I sit it up there and glue it in. Judge, there was a bit of a rush there at the end to try and get it on with the silicon, and she sagged a bit in the middle. I had it propped up with the uh, level, but it fell over, of course. Uh, it's good to have a perception of actual clearance and height in here now. Uh, it's easy to draw these things on SketchUp, but when you put it into real life, uh, they don't always work. It seems like it'll be okay. The hatch is going to be made out of the outside wall material, which is 30 mil thick roughly, um, hinged uh, in this area here. So it's probably gonna end up like that height, which is getting close to my noggin, but um, it's unlikely I'm ever gonna get in here. So what I think I'll do is have that hatch open slightly past horizontal, so it's a bit um, sloping up a bit. And then when you're standing out here, it's, you've got heaps of clearance and as you get closer in, it gets lower. Um, I'm six foot tall roughly, which not too bad, so if you're a bit taller, you probably won't be able to use my kitchen. Um, the other thing I've got in my advantage is that the airbags uh, at that measurement there are 60 mil deflated to um, beyond past the middle of the range. So actually the you know the optimum ride height is, I've worked out 500 mil from the top of that hub to the bottom of there, which is actually here, 500 mil is about there. So this whole thing will come up for optimum ride height. Obviously you get to camp in here, you can adjust airbags and 
get the van level and make this higher or lower so I've got all that flexibility. But, you know, um, the whole thing was designed around that being 60 mil higher and therefore that being 60 mil higher as well. Uh, happy with how it's turning out, what can I say? Uh, it's better than my expectations were set at, so pretty happy. Uh, burning daylight hours, I reckon this is take 52 of this uh, description, so I'm gonna use this one and I'm gonna get on with the rest of the day. <laughs> Cheers. Last job on the agenda for today um, is to get the drawers flushed with the fronts to the panels there, make them all equidistant all the way around so they look neat, and then go around and chuck, the, chuck some magnets on the back. Uh, I'm hoping these magnets will have enough holding power for two on each drawer to stop them sliding out when I break. Uh, so I'm part way through, I've just got these four in. I've got to do the rest of them. These it feels strong. Don't know if it's going to be strong enough. Uh, when they're full of clothes and heavy and you're shaking down the road, I reckon they're probably going to move. So, yeah, I'd say there'll be some sort of mechanical latch solution that I need to put on the front. It does stop them sliding side to side a lot of the back here, so it'll, be it'll minimise the movement with the magnet, which I like. But yeah, I'm not confident it's going to stop it sliding out, especially this one's going to be full of pots and pans and stuff in the kitchen, so definitely don't want that flying out and smashing into my induction cooker and everything else that's in there. Uh, I think we'll call it a day on the episode, running out of time. Um, hopefully in the next one you will see me putting in a water heater, running pipes everywhere in the van to connect up kitchen sinks and ensuite area. Um, probably there'll be a bit of wiring that needs to be done. I've also got to put this bed frame platform in, which I keep promising I'm going to do, but I never seem to get to realising that I put that in, access to all this stuff's going to be a nightmare, so it will go in very late, uh, is my um, thought process now. I've got to do all this plumbing, I've got to crawl around in here, so I definitely don't want that in the way. And realistically, it can just go on uh, prior to the walls going on, so yeah, we'll leave that for a little while. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, leave some comments below about what do you think I can do better. I know there's a lot. Uh, if there's some catastrophic issue and failure that I've done, don't tell me because I've already built the van and I don't want to know about it. By the time you see this, it'll already be built. So anyway, um, jump on perpetual.transient uh, on Insta too if you want to get alerts about this stuff. And I'm going to have a, the, the feed that flows through through the week ahead of the episodes where you're going to find out what's going on as well. So feel free to jump on there. I've also got a Facebook page. Hopefully by the time you see this, there's a website as well. Uh, all the uh, links will be in the description to all of those things. So have a look and uh, check it out. Cheerio for now. Catch ya.